my investigation is on the mechanism by which accretion disks can become aligned uh, when they're orbiting around a, a black hole. This was done with Julian Krolik at Johns Hopkins University. This research was supported by a, a grant from the Great Lakes Consortium for Petascale Computing. Uh, for those of you unfamiliar with that, uh, they have a block and they distribute it out in uh, small little chunks to uh, worthy individuals around the nation who are part of the consortium. So the, um, the problem is accretion disks. Uh, in particular, uh, accretion disks really are basically the combination of gravity and angular momentum. Those combinations cause collapse, but collapse into a spinning disk. The power that you get from an accretion disk comes from the in spiral of matter, converting gravitational energy into other forms of energy. Uh, and of course, the accretion disks are believed to be in the center of some of the most uh, astrophysically interesting objects in the universe. Uh, basically, the uh, concepts behind the accretion disk are well understood, but the details are, uh, are, are difficult and the observations are uh, sometimes ambiguous. Uh, the issue that I'm focusing on today is the notion that uh, there's no reason in the world why the angular momentum vector of the uh, accreting gas should be aligned with the spin either of the black hole or uh, the neutron star or the binary system in which it might be accreting. Uh, but uh, the expectation has been for the about 40 years that the actions of the, uh, the non-Newtonian uh, components of the gravity in the system would cause the disk to become aligned. Okay, so we would like to understand how that happens and exactly what sort of predictions we could make about where the disk becomes aligned. All right, so uh, the basic idea is that if you have a system uh, which is spinning like a black hole with a tilt, uh, it will produce a torque on the system, which is the, uh, basically the cross product of the angular momentum uh, of the black hole J crossed with the angular momentum of the accretion disk L. Uh, now, if you recall, what a torque will do to a spinning top is that it makes it process. Okay, now, because the torque actually falls off, as you can see, as uh, basically uh, radius to the third power, uh, the torque uh, is strongly variable across the disk the uh, precision, precession frequency, too, uh, goes as one over the, the uh, r to the third power, which means the uh, disk will precess differentially. And what that means is that as you go out through the disk, the uh, angular momentum vector will be circling around the black hole's angular momentum vector, but as you go from one radius to the next, there'll be a slight change in the orientation of that. That difference, then, is something that could be canceled out if you have uh, angular momentum sharing between the rings. If the system is purely a, uh, a particles, you know, without uh, interaction, then you'll just have this processing system. But if there is dissipation uh, and angular momentum transport, the differential press procession can lead to uh, canceling out of the non-aligned angular momentum bit. So it's the dissipation between the rings that's critical to the process. So the uh, question then really is the mechanism of alignment and the alignment location depends on the nature of the dissipation in the system. All right, so uh, now the, uh, we just said that. Uh, the, uh, this has been studied for 40 years, but of course 40 years ago they didn't have blue waters, so they approached the problem at, from an analytic point of view, in particular doing uh, a linear approximations and uh, using an assumption that the disk was viscous with a rather simple formula for the viscosity, which was that it was proportional basically to the uh, sound speed times the scale height, okay, uh, times some parameter alpha, which is of course the famous accretion disk alpha parameter. Now, the problem is that a, a low Reynolds number viscous disk is not the same as a high Reynolds number turbulent disk. Uh, and so, um, the, and the, uh, Turbulence is not necessarily going to be anything like a, an isotropic viscosity, although the viscosity parameterized there is assumed to be an isotropic viscosity. Um, the source of accretion stress is MHD turbulence driven by the thing we learned about in the last lecture, uh, magnetorotational instability, and the R phi component uh, is strongly favored by the process of the magnetorotational instability. So the, the stress tensor has, is very non-symmetric, non-isotropic. Uh, and so this is the key quote that uh, a large Reynolds number turbulent disk is simply not a laminar disk with a much smaller Reynolds number, okay? But the theory 
that people have used to address the problem is based on the assumption that it can be treated as a viscous system. Okay, so um, you may get, there may be valid insights from the existing analytic theory, but uh, it's certainly something we should be checked. All right, so in my investigation, um, I assume no viscous stress and instead use magnetic disks to generate MRI-driven MHD turbulence to provide the internal stress. Uh, now, what I'm doing here is not uh, modeling, uh, you know, the whole system. It's not really a model. It's a numerical experiment. I set up a highly idealized problem where I can control the physics that goes in, and then I can vary certain aspects of the physics to understand what's going on. Um, I can include or exclude various terms and adjust parameters to get contrast. Um, and I also was comparing the MHD models to ones with pure hydrodynamic models with no accretion stress. Um, I'm not sure that people have done this much in the past way, way people traditionally have simulated this for the past, uh, what is it, it's uh, 19, so the last 20 years, I think, uh, at, where they've done these simulations, where it first became possible, was just assuming a, a viscosity, an alpha-type viscosity in the system. Uh, but I'm also doing purely hydrodynamic models. Indeed, the, this whole project started with uh, a disk that wasn't torqued at all. It's simply a purely hydrodynamic disk uh, that had a, a, uh, a twist applied to it, and then we observed how the twist relaxed. So that was the simplest form of the problem. Uh, we used Newtonian gravity rather than relativity or anything else simply because um, the uh, Newtonian potential is, is very simple and allows us to sort of descale the problem. Uh, you can add then a post-Newtonian external torque term, which is uh, sort of the lowest order approximation to the lens tearing torque from a black hole system. Uh, and again, you have a parameter there that you can adjust. Uh, you can turn up the torque or you can turn it down as you see fit. Um, so the aim is simply to elucidate what's going on inside the disk through a series of simulations and comparisons uh, while controlling tightly the uh, background nature of the problem you're working on. Uh, so that what we focused on in the investigations that used blue waters were the effect of sound speed or temperature in the disk and the tilt angle of the black hole with respect to the accretion disk. Okay, so the numer numerical approach is very straightforward. Uh, just plain old time explicit operator split, finite differencing, compressible MHD, constrained transport, and spherical coordinates uh, using the Zeus algorithm with some modifications uh, recently. Um, this is a, <clears throat> I, be I went into administration, what is today, 2019, uh, 13 years ago. Uh, and so uh, while I was merely a chair of the department, I spent my time rewriting Zeus into Fortran 95. Uh, it, was a, it was a lot of fun compared to uh, the other things that the department chairman does. Um, since I became an associate dean, I don't have even time for that. So, um, so it's a good thing the code works. Uh, domain decomposition, MPI parallelization, uh, it uh, shows, as usual, of a code like this type, excellent weak scaling. Uh, and again, the very simple Newtonian gravity in post-Newtonian terms. Uh, to isolate the effect of sound speed in the disk, uh, we used a, what would be pretty uh, artificial, which was a disk with an isothermal equation of state, there, thereby so the sound speed was the same at every point in the disk. Um, and then looked at uh, a com three different sound speeds and three different tilt angles. Okay, so why blue waters? Well, I think you know the answer to that because uh, anything that involves three-dimensional time-dependent turbulent MHD is probably going to be reasonably computationally expensive. But the, uh, the point here uh, is also that the, um, you have these times, which are the orbital frequency, which is the Keplerian frequency of the orbits, the precession frequency, which is generally much smaller than the orbital frequency and drops off rapidly. Uh, you've got your sound speeds and your alphane speed compared to the scale height, the scale height as you lower the sound speed, the scale height gets much thinner, harder to resolve. Uh, studies have shown that you need to have something on the order of 30 or so grid zones across the scale height. Um, and so when you've got, say, the scale height h compared to the radius r of 0.02 or something like that, then you've, you know, you've kind of got a lot of grid zones you need. Um, so uh, if, if you're really talking about a black hole system, of course, it would go from the uh, event horizon of the black hole out to tens of thousands of radii, black hole radii. We can't really do that, both for the reasons it's you know, too big a problem and it also would take too long to do. Uh, so we limit all the scales through a problem definition, uh, which still requires high resolution and long duration simulation. Now, most of this stuff uh, could be done uh, on the university cluster, 
we have a, at UVA, we have a, about 5,000 core, pretty standard cluster. Um, and if I was allowed to have the whole cluster for myself uh, for several months, then I maybe could have gotten along without Blue Waters. The problem is that I'm in charge of allocating the time on that cluster, and so that was a strict conflict of interest. Uh, so I was able to use it for the hydrodynamic comparison simulations and low-resolution MHD simulations, but when you're, gonna, you're getting to a billion grid zones, uh, you're going to need uh, blue water. So the capstone simulations, uh, the, the allocation from the Great Lakes Consortium was vital for getting the uh, capstone simulations of this project uh, because, you know, basically you, what you want to do is use the whole ecosystem, you know, everywhere, everything from the laptop to your uh, university scale cluster, then up to the, the most powerful machines to do the defining simulations that once you've sort of understood the problem. Uh, so here's an example of a, the first thing you have to do, of course, is get a, an MHD turbulent disk. So we set up a disk, we don't turn on the torque, we run it for a long time until it becomes MHD turbulent uh, throughout the region of interest, and then we turn on the torque. And so there on the right, you see uh, uh, the uh, disk as it has aligned partially. Uh, there's a black line, I'm not sure how clear it is, which is the equator of the black hole in this system. So you can see that the inner part of the disk has aligned. Uh, and the outer part of the disk remains unaligned, and in between there's a transition radius, or a transition region. So we looked at three different uh, isothermal disks. Uh, the one on the left is the thickest and hottest disk, and that in fact did not require blue waters because the resolution required for that wasn't so great. Uh, the next one over um, begins to start to get a bit of a, a bit fussy, uh, and then the one on the right was the, uh, the coldest disk, hence the thinnest and using the greatest uh, grid resolution. Um, and I think you can see if you look at the three uh, plots there that the alignment radius increases um, with the, as you diminish the sound speed. And this is not uh, unpredicted. Uh, if, you do a, if you regard the angular momentum distribution as a basically a diffusion problem in steady state uh, and uh, do a dimensional analysis, then you would predict that the uh, radius of transition for the aligned to non-aligned region should be a function of sound speed to the minus four-fifth power. And uh, as this plot shows, uh, with those three simulations, we do in fact find alignment which is consistent with that model. Um, next, uh, we tried looking at three different tilt angles. Again, um, this becomes uh, slightly more difficult uh, the higher the tilt goes with the sort of grids that we're able to use here, but we were able to go 6, 12, and 24 degrees. Um, and um, if you take the, uh, you know, take, plot the uh, alignment angle on the left there, um, which is the degrees of misalignment from the uh, black hole's axis, and so at low radius it's aligned, so it's down at zero. And the top curve shows the um, basically 24 degrees, so it and when it gets out to a radius of 25, it's basically unaligned, and in between is the transition. And so you see the three different align alignment tilts there on the left. If you rescale it to be a fractional tilt, a fractional alignment with respect to the tilt, the, you see the three curves sort of lay on top of one another. Um, <clears throat> there is some, some variation, but, uh, but it's not too great. And uh, basically, uh, you can understand this from a, a rather simple uh, model of angular momentum transport where you don't look at the details, but you uh, b basically consider the sources of angular momentum transport and their operation, and you can see basically that to first order, the tilt angle doesn't have a, a, a function in, in determining the alignment. So uh, result summary, what have we learned? Some stuff we have learned. Uh, most of the process that covers alignment is purely hydrodynamic in nature. It's bulk stresses that are produced by mismatched radial pressure gradients as, you, as the disk is twisted. Um, so even the purely hydrodynamic disks align, uh, but their behavior is slightly different. So there are differences between disks that have internal stress and disks that don't, but we are not going to go into that today. Um, so the MHD turbulence does not act as an isotropic stress. There's no significant out-of-plane uh, MHD stresses. That is, if you consider bending the disk in a purely viscous fluid, there would be some uh, viscous stress as you bend out of the plane. But with the MHD, it, it, it's, the fields are sufficiently weak that the tension from the field itself is, is a negligible contributor. 
what makes the MRI work is that it's tapping directly into the angular momentum gra uh, gradient. Uh, the difference between hydro and MHD is that the latter is turbulent. Uh, the turbulence plays an interesting secondary role by disrupting the internal motion of bending waves throughout the disk, and so delays the onset of a solid body uh, precession, which brings alignment to a halt in, in these simulations. Um, and so the um, transition front is simply determined between a, a balance between the external torque, which is being applied by the system, and the warp-induced mixing of the angular momentum in the disk. Uh, and we have shown that a simple diffusion model gives us the right scaling for the sound speed uh, and that the um, warp amplitude uh, is the uh, relevant physical discriminant. Uh, <clears throat> and this goes against the uh, sort of the traditional picture of wave-like versus uh, viscous uh, evolution in tilted disks. The thing that's important is simply the amplitude of the tilt with respect to the scale height of the disk. You know, so it's basically nonlinear or linear. It doesn't, it's not really controlled by the size of alpha. Okay. And so, as I indicated, the uh, alignment mechanism in our simulations, we found it didn't really depend much on tilt. This is uh, obviously only the first, uh, first uh, step uh, in, in sort of sorting this problem out, but uh, uh, out of all this, uh, Blue Waters played the important role of uh, several of those simulations at the highest resolution uh, to uh, basically give us the uh, key uh, simulations for the project. So thank you.